Today we will review sixth grade math lesson 16.3. This lesson will cover how to find the mean absolute deviation. Here is your I can statement. I can find the mean absolute deviation of a data set and explain my solution method to others. So let's review your vocab for today. So your vocab is mean absolute deviation. It's a lot of times referred to with the acronym MAD or MAD. So the mean absolute devi deviation is the mean distance on a number line between each data value and the mean of the data set. It measures the spread of data or the variability. It also is, can look at it as the average of how much the individual scores of data differ from the mean of the entire data set. This will make more sense as we go along. This type of data um, is something that you really need to do. It's very detailed. There's a lot of little math in it, so just hang in there and try to be as accurate as you can. Um, if you want examples of this, please go to homework on page 507 for examples similar to this. Um, I encourage you to stop this video at any time and work out these problems first on your own. And now I'm going to do some examples for you. So Mason counted the number of eggs and nests of two birds of the same specimen over 10 breeding cycles. Find the mean absolute deviation of the two sets of data. So if you can see here, there's bird A and bird B, and he collected data over 10 breeding cycles of the number of eggs they laid. So that's what's going on, and that's the kind of data that we're gonna be looking at today. Um, this explains the step-by-step -step process, which is helpful. Okay, so it says find the mean of each data set. So remember when we're finding the mean, that's the average. So you're going to take the sum of the data values. We have to add them all together and divide it by the number of values in data set. So that's what they did here, where they did 29 divided by 10. If they added all these numbers up here for bird A, you would get 29, and then there's 10 numbers. So you divide it by 10 and you get 2.9. So 2.9 is your mean for the first bird. Then bird B, they do the same thing and they've added up these values here and they get 28 over 10. So the mean of this second one is 2.8 of the second bird. And as you can see, the mean helps you describe the center, but also these are really close. So 2.9 and 2.8 makes it so I can't really analyze the data without using another strategy. So that's why we're gonna use the mean absolute deviation because it helps you compare two things when your mean is so close. Okay, so step two is you're going to find the deviation of each data value from the mean by determining the distance on a number line between the data value and the mean. Okay, so this is where it gets really detailed. So let me go up here and look at bird A first. 
So if we look at bird A, and we know this is my mean here of 2.9. They don't show you this in example, so I need to show you where they got all of these numbers here, because that's the deviation. So what they're doing is they're taking the number three and they are subtracting the mean. So three minus 2.9 is 0 0.1, so it's 1 tenth. So if you can see here, that's where they got the 1 tenth. Then they do it again and they say, 3 minus 2.9, and you can see, again, they get 1 tenth. Then they take the next value, 4, so they do this for every single one. Then they do 4 minus 2.9, and they get 1.1. And you can see here, they get 1.1. Then they take the two. So this is very detailed. And they now, when you have two, it's smaller than 2.9. So then you take two point, you take the larger one minus the smaller one, and you get 0 0.9. So that's where they're getting that number. And now they're doing the three again. Three minus 2.9 is one-tenth, and then they have to do the four, which is one and one-tenth. Then they do the five. So now they're subtracting five minus 2.9, which is 2.1. So that's where they're getting that number. Then they do the one, oops, One, so then they do 2.9 minus one, which would be 1.9. And then they do 2.9 minus two, which is nine tenths, and 2.9 minus two is nine tenths. So that's where they're getting all these deviations, is they have to do all this detailed math. Then, to do step three is they have to take the sum of the deviations, which means all of these values here, I have to add them up and then divide by the number of values in the data set. So if I add all those up, I get 9.2, 9 and 2 tenths, and I'm dividing it by 10, because there's 10 numbers in the data set, which would get me 92 hundredths. And that is my mean absolute deviation for bird A. See how detailed this is? It takes a lot of time. Now you're gonna have to do the same thing for bird B. You're going to have to take every single value, but remember their mean, the mean for bird A I have to take all those numbers, but remember, their mean here is 2.8. So for this example, remember, these are all the deviations. In order to get this, I have to say 2.8 minus 1. Which is 1.8. That's where they get the first one. That's where they get the second one. You have to do every one, and then 3 minus 2.8 is 0 0.2. So again, you're going to have to do that whole set. Then you're going to have to take the sum of all the deviations. When we take the sum of the deviations, you get 14 divided by 10, which is 1 and 4 tenths. That's your mean absolute deviation for bird 2. And you can see that bird B is, has a greater mean absolute deviation when you're comparing the data. So just stick to it and don't give up. So let's look at a couple of these examples. I'm going to do for you 
questions one and two, and then I'll just give you the answers for the rest of them in case you wanna do those on your own. So I'll give you the mean absolute deviation, but I will do questions one and two for you. And then you can do these other two on your own and check your answers. Okay, so here we go with question one. Find the mean absolute deviation of each set. So the first thing I have to do is I have to put these numbers in order from least to greatest. So 7, 8, 10, 10, 13. Then I have to find the mean. So I have to add them all and divide by the number, which is 5. 5 data. So if I add them up, I get 45 divided by 5, which would be 9.6 is my mean. Okay, now I need to do the deviation. Okay, so I need to find the deviation. So I need to take the mean. So the first one I have is 9.6 minus 7. 9.6 minus 8, and then 10 minus 9 point, oops, let's subtract 9.6, and then 13 minus 9.6. So if I have, I got 2.6, 1.6, 0.4, and 3.4. And then I also make sure I need, I had two tens, so I need to put 0 0.4 here as well. I need to add those up. I get 8.4. So now I need to do 8.4, which is the sum of the deviations, divided by 5, because I had five numbers in my data set. And I would get 1.68 is my mean absolute deviation. Okay, let's try one for question two. Okay, I need to go ahead and put these numbers in order. So 110 plus 106. Oh, sorry, I need to put them in order. I'll just write them down. Okay. 104 plus 106 plus 108 plus 110 plus 114. And I have five. So if I add those all up, I get 542 divided by five. If I divide that, I get 108.4 is my mean. Now I need to find the deviation for each of them. So I need to do 108.4 minus 104, 108.4 minus 106, 108.4 minus 108, and then 110 minus 108.4 and 114 minus 108.4, and I need to add them up. Okay, so I get 4.4, 2.4, 4 tenths, 1 and 6 tenths, and 5 and 6 tenths, and I get 14.4. Now I need to do 14.4, I have 5, the data points, which is 2.88 is my mean absolute deviation. So that is your lesson for module 16, lesson three, grade six.